Optimistic locking is a concurrency control technique for managing concurrent access to your database. Essentially, it's about preventing two users from changing the same piece of data at the same time. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement optimistic locking with Entity Framework Core. So here's what we are going to do. I have a use case here for removing a line item from an order. We're fetching the order from the repository, calling our rich domain model to remove the line item from the order, and then persisting the changes using the unit of work. So now we want to implement a feature to prevent two users from removing a line item from an order at the same time. This could be the same line item, but it can also be a different line item. It doesn't matter. We only want to allow one user to update the order at one point in time. There's two approaches to solve this. One is called pessimistic locking and one is called optimistic locking. To show you what pessimistic locking is, I'm going to define a field here to use as an example. And this is going to be my iApplication DB context interface, which allows me to work with EF core directly. So I want to access the database facade to be able to call the begin transaction method. Now this method also accepts an isolation level argument the default isolation level is read committed. This means that you have a temporary lock while you're reading the data, but the data can be updated by other transactions before your transaction completes. To implement pessimistic locking, you want one of the higher isolation levels, such as serializable, and then what's going to happen is all of the rows that you read inside of this DB context transaction are going to be locked until you commit the transaction at the end by calling transaction commit. This is a straightforward approach, but the problem is you might end up locking too many rows in the database and it can degrade performance. So I'm going to show you an alternative approach that's going to rely on optimistic locking. When EF Core is loading the order into memory, it's going to make a note of what the version was at that point of time. And then when it's updating the order, it's going to check that the versions match, which means that the order was not updated behind the scenes and it's safe to update the order in the database. If the order was updated before we were able to call save changes, then there's going to be a version mismatch and EF Core is going to throw an exception. So here's what we're going to do in this case. I'm going to go to the line item configuration, which is my EF Core configuration for this entity. And I'm going to create a shadow property inside, which is going to be of type unsigned integer. I can give it a whatever name, let's say version, and I'm going to call the is row version method. This is a way to create a version column in the line items table, and I'm going to make it a concurrency token at the same time by calling is row version, and it's going to be automatically updated by the database. So let's go ahead and create a new migration which I will call add line item version. And what EF Core is going to do in this case is create a new column in the line items table. And the name of this column is going to be xmin. It's also going to be configured as a row version. And this is something that is specific to PostgreSQL, but it can also be applied to other databases. And the xmin column is actually a system column and it contains the ID of the last transaction that updated this record. So this is a perfect fit for a row version for implementing optimistic locking. So now I'm going to start the project. This is going to apply my migration and we're going to try to delete a line item from the order. I'm going to send a delete request from Postman and we hit the handle method in our command handler. So we're going to fetch the order together with the line items from the database. And I want you to take a look at the query that EF Core is going to generate. And specifically this part here, you can see it's loading the value of the X min column together with the other columns from the line items table. This is because it's going to use this value to compare it to the line item that is about to be deleted. And if these values are different, we're going to run into an exception. Since I already know which line item this is, I'll head over into the Beaver and let's update the price behind the scenes. So now this is going to update the X min column for this row to the new transaction that I'm just going to complete. And now if we go back to the code and we try to remove the line item, which is going to succeed and persist the changes, we're going to run a concurrency check, which I'm going to show you here. So Here's the query that EF Core tried to execute in the database. It's trying to delete from the line items table 
where the ID is equal to the one sent as a parameter. And it's also checking that the row version, which is the xmin column, is the same as the one that was read from the database at the start of the transaction. Because I changed this record behind the scenes, which is like another user updating the row before you could, we are the ones running into a DB update concurrency exception. And this is how you can implement optimistic locking with EF Core. After this, it's up to you how you're going to handle this. You could just return the error to the user and tell them to try again, while you also update the data in the background. You could perhaps try to retry this transaction behind the scenes, if that is suitable for your use case, or you can come up with some custom solution for solving concurrency exceptions. Optimistic locking is a good choice when you don't expect a large number of collisions and you're mostly solving for that rare situation when a concurrency error might happen. If you have a large number of expected conflicts, then it's better to use an explicit pessimistic lock and just hold the database transaction for as long as you need to make the update. If you enjoyed this video about optimistic locking with EF Core, take a look at this video next, where I'm talking about using transactions inside of EF Core. And of course, until next time, stay awesome.